I'm pleased to introduce our next speaker, Dr. David Dunay, who's a professor of history of science and history of ideas at Lund University, uh, where he is also a researcher at the Center for Cognitive Semiotics. Uh, Dr. Dunay's research concerns the development of science, medicine, mathematics, and technology during the scientific revolution and onwards. His latest book is The Natural Philosophy of Emanuel Swedenborg, a study in the conceptual metaphors of the mechanistic worldview. Dr. Dunay studies the history of astrobiology, uh, and uh, he was the guest editor of a special issue on the history and philosophy of astrobiology for the journal Astrobiology. His astrobiological research includes astrocognition, the study of cognition in space, uh, as detailed in his chapter, Astrocognition, Prolegomena to a Future Cognitive History of Exploration, which appeared in the book Humans in Outer Space, Interdisciplinary Perspectives. Uh, his work on the semiotic and cognitive foundations of interstellar communication appeared in the volume Communication with Extraterrestrial Intelligence, and today he will talk to us about interstellar intersubjectivity, the significance of shared cognition for communication in space. Dr. Dunay. Thank you very much. Um, in this workshop, we have so far, we have communicated, we have talked to each other, we have interacted, we had uh, shared our experiences with each other. Uh, so, so we have tried to, to understand uh, other minds and we have tried to reach other minds when we are talking to each other. And what, what this makes uh, it possible is what I call intersubjectivity. And I will soon uh, explain what I mean with intersubjectivity. But if we go to interstellar communication, uh, we are searching for an intelligence, an extraterrestrial intelligence that we can understand, that we can communicate with, that has intentions and uh, is self-conscious and uh, social and had advanced civilization and technology. And we have to show that we are alive, intelligent and self-conscious. And we must recognize that they have attentions and intentions and they have to recognize that we have it. So the case is to be similar. Uh, we need intersubjectivity in order to, to succeed in interstellar communication. So there, there is uh, at least four characteristics of such an extraterrestrial life form um, that we have presumed in our research. Uh, they have intelligence, sociability, communication, and technology. And these characteristics, I, I would argue, are interrelated and dependent on more fundamental cognitive skills. So when we are searching for extraterrestrial life uh, and these uh, characteristics, we have also to ask ourselves, what is it? What is, is uh, intelligence? What is so sociability, etc.? And why do we have it? And how has it evolved? So I, I would today say, follow, um, talk about these four characteristics and give you a tentative answer to, to these questions. And I will argue that there is one cognitive ability behind these characteristics that, that uh, is important for and indispensable for any successful uh, interstellar communication. And that is uh, intersubjectivity. And with intersubjectivity, I mean sharing of experiences about objects and, and events, or to explain it more precisely, the sharing of experiential content for example, feelings, perceptions, thoughts, and linguistic meanings among a plurality of subjects. So it seems that to be a human is not only to be aware of our own faults, 
but also be aware of other thoughts, feelings, intentions, etc. to have intersubjective skills. So, the, the following argument rests on the belief that we need to focus on the cognitive foundations of interstellar communication. And that co cognition and communication are results of a biocultural co-evolution of a particular species on a particular planet. So, if we are searching for extraterrestrial intelligence in space, we seriously have to take into account the research within cognitive science, linguistics, and affiliated research areas in order to get satisfactory uh, answers to the questions. What is needed for higher cognitive skills to evolve? What physical, biological, social, cultural, and other environmental factors shape cognition? And what cognitive abilities are needed for a living organism to be able to manipulate its environment? or, in other words, to develop technology. So what I'm saying is that we need to study cognitive science and linguistic. We will never, uh, we will never uh, solve this problem without th these fields, I would say. And we have to go further from astrobiology and don't, not only uh, searching or for uh, or studying the living universe, we should also discuss uh, and come up with theories about the thinking universe. And that was what I, I mean with astrocognition. So, I, I think we have to go to the bottom with these questions, uh, what, what we are talking about, actually. And what is intelligence in the first place? And uh, in the Drake equation, it says only the, the ability to transmit electromagnetic uh, magnetic, uh, waves. And that could be an operative definition of intelligence. But that's not satisfying if we want to communicate and to understand another civilization. Uh, and a more sloppy definition could be the ability to solve problems, to make rational choices to reason logically, to handle the constraints and limitations of time, space, and materials. Uh, but I would say that intelligence is not about logic and mathematics. What I think is constituting intelligence is, among others, two abilities that we find among intelligent beings. The first is that they can imagine things not existing. Um, an intelligent being can test various options or simulate events in its mind instead of doing it in the world outside the brain. It can think about uh, things that doesn't exist and will never exist. And second, um, an intelligent being could understand other minds. Imagine and envision what they will do, what they feel and reason. To be intelligent is to have intersubjective skills. If the extraterrestrial being that we encounter is lacking these two abilities, it would probably not have complex communication and advanced technology, and we would not be able to communicate with it. So I would say that intelligence I would pr uh, prefer the, uh, to call it cognitive flexibility, uh, an ability to adjust to changes in the physical and social cultural environment. And intelligence could be seen as an evolved mental gymnastics required to survive and reproduce within a specific environment. And this includes the capability of representing activities and being able to make inner models of reality and also of other minds. But why do we have uh, cognition or intelligence and where does these cognitive skills come from? And uh, cognitive flexibility, I would say, has emerged 
through an, a biocultural co-evolution of the embodied minds due to its benefits for survival uh, orientation and adaptation to their changing physical and social cultural environment. Um, extraterrestrial minds, like terrestrial minds, have adapted to their specific environment and the specific social interactions between the minds of their particular species. And the most demanding of all the environments we live in is the social environment. And according to the social brain hypothesis uh, put forward by Robin Dunbar, uh, is the complex social structure of the group an important drive for the emergence of intelligence. So if there are intelligent or rather cognitive flexible beings in space, we can probably suppose that they are social and multi-adaptable to different environments. And they need uh, to be able to handle complex social relations, uh, to understand other individuals' feelings, thoughts, attentions, intentions. In short, they need intersubjectivity. So in Intelligent species are social species. And why do we, are we social? Um, sociability and the social context enhance the adaptation to the physical environment and make the individuals less vulnerable to a hostile environment. So to be social is about, um, is about um, survival. And perhaps the most uh, typical characteristic of human social interaction is the ability to learn from others, that is culture. So in one way, we are already post-biological uh, creatures. We are using, have an ability to transfer information from generation to generation that does not use the genetic code for the transfer, but is learned, talked, and transferred by a multitude of communicative and cultural devices and artifacts. For example, languages, signs, pictures, sounds, objects, etc. So the social, cultural, educational skills are fundamental prerequisites for the survival and technological develop, uh, development of uh, an extraterrestrial civilization. So, uh, there are reason, reasons to believe that social complexity has been the driving force behind the emergence of intelligence, brain size, and communicative complexi uh, complexity. In complex uh, social systems, in individuals frequently interact in many different ways, uh, in different contexts, with many different individuals, and often repeatedly interact with many of the same individuals over time. So a social complex civilization has many individuals rather than few, high rather than uh, low de density, many different member roles rather than few roles, and an egalitarian structure rather than a uh, hierarchical uh, structure. And these four characteristics of social complexity will enhance the emergence of advanced technology. Many individuals entail greater collective brain power, and a high density entails more frequent and fast interactions between the individuals. And many different member roles entail a distributed and specialized cognitive processing. And many, and uh, finally, egalitarian societies have a greater diversity of directional relations and more reversals and agonistic uh, interactions. So if a t technological civilization has survived for a longer period of time, so we can detect them, it has probably a high degree of distributed uh, decision-making. A society with distributed decision-making is more flexible better able to change and less vulnerable to disturbances in the communication network. Uh, secondly, 
it must have found ways of dealing with agoni uh, agonistic uh, behavior and conflicts, must have arrived at some sort of reliable ethics or uh, regulation system for behavior. Or, and in order to deal with destructive behavior, these civilizations must have advanced uh, intersubjective skills to understand other subjects and a high degree of communica communica communicative flex uh, complexity to sustain and strengthen the intersubjective uh, interactions between its members, including long experiences of communicate, uh, com communicating with a diversity of groups and spe species. So communication, uh, social com complexity leads to uh, commu communicative uh, complexity. And communication can be regarded as a sharing of mental states and, and expression of uh, expression as information about mental states. Communication is based on cognitive abilities embodied in the organism that has developed through an evolutionary and social cultural process by interacting with its specific environment. So communication has an evolutionary background uh, that's important to, to, to remember. So no doubt intersubjectivity plays a critical role in the acquisition of language. But it has still not been discussed in the context of interstellar communication. And there is two uh, key words or t key concepts in, uh, in communication that I, I would put forward. And the first is intention, that the sender, sender's utterance is meant to produce a particular response and that the receiver recognizes that the sender intends. The second is that a message need to have involved attention also. When I'm talking to you, I, I monitor you uh, sometimes to, to check your attention to my talk. If you are looking at me or, or the screen or at your laptop. Uh, so attention is very important for communication. So we have to understand the communicating partner as an intentional agent with whom one may share attention towards something. So in order to reach more complex commu 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 communication, we have to uh, uh, not, not just uh, use intention and attention, imitation or iconic signs uh, or indices, but also the more complicated symbolic signs, uh, that is conventional or arbitrary signs that are detached representations. Uh, as such, they are dependent on culture and human interaction. If the extraterrestrials are intelligent, they probably have some kind of symbolization abilities and abstract thinking detached from the uh, um, environment, which, we, uh, which they can reason about things not existent. And they need also um, a large number of structurally and functionally di distinct elements, a large repertoire of distinct signals. But uh, what is um, technology then? The fourth of, of the terms that we are, are searching for uh, in outer space. Uh, in its most uh, general uh, way, it could be described as ways of manipulating the environment and using objects in the environment outside the body to strengthen the genetically given capacities such as body strength, perception or m memory. But technology is not about science, it's not applied science. Um, we don't actually need science to, to develop technology. It has nothing to do with, uh, not so much to do with uh, rationality or the inventive mind or logic or, or mathematics. 
technology is, to a large extent, a social phenomenon, I would say, a product of the cultural evolution. What, what I mean is that what makes advanced technology possible is, first, that it needs a sustainable, complex social system with a re regulated system for collaboration, such as ethics. Uh, in, order to, um, uh, in order to achieve advanced technological skills, the individuals have to cooperate in joint activities where they are sharing goals and attentions. They must be able to engage in prospective planning to anticipate the future and have the capacity to represent future needs. And they must have a functioning social structure that can handle and avoid crisis, a complex social system that regulates risks and destructive behavior. Second, uh, a complex communi communicative system is needed in order to handle the social com complexity, to facilitate collaboration, to transfer information between the individuals. And the communicative system must enable the users to construct abstract concepts and symbols to generalize, to discuss uh, things and events not existent they have to, that have ex see, um, ceased to exist and have not yet come into being. And the third factor important for the emergence of higher technology is a high degree of distributed cognition, the, in, the ability to use not only external objects, but also other minds in cooperation to enhance thinking. Um, so all these three capacities that is required, needed for higher technology, uh, require also intersubjective skills. So intersubjectivity is an indispensable requisite for the evolution of intelligence, sociability, communication, and advanced technology. If that's true, intersubjectivity is a sine qua non for any future interstellar communication. So we have to focus on intersubjectivity in order to make an understandable message to, to, to another civilization. So how do we proceed from this knowledge about um, intersubjectivity. And I would suggest uh, three steps in a roadmap towards to what I call uh, an interstellar intersubjective interaction. And the first step is quite obvious, to search for Earth analogues, uh, habitable planets with similar physical and chemical char characteristics as ours. And that's not because of analogical reasons, but also that we should search for um, intelligence that have evolved uh, under similar physical or env environmental pressure. If we think that uh, our minds are an adaptation to the physical environment, but also the social environment, but to the physical environment, similar a uh, physical environment would, would, would uh, um, lead to similar adaptation for, for intelligent beings. And the second step uh, could be to monitor these Earth analogues for, for a period of time and searching for, of course, electromagnetic leakage. But uh, in the future, maybe we could also analyze the atmosphere of these exoplanets and searching for not only biomarkers uh, that could be uh, signs of life uh, or organic molecules, but also what I would call uh, technomarkers. Uh, maybe we could analyze and find out if there is any synthetic uh, molecules in the atmosphere that is a sign of the, that there is some artificial uh, process going on on that. Uh, exoplanet. So, 
if it turns out that they, they have an arti artificially affected unstable environment, this can indicate that they have a rather, in fact, rather uh, primitive intersubjectivity, uh, intersubjective skills and altruistic behavior if they are not in, in balance with their environment. Um, so th the next step could be then to, instead of formulating an abstract, universal, symbolic message stuffed with information that has to be coded and decoded, we, have, we, we know that uh, actually interstellar communication is not a, a technological problem. We know that we can reach the other stars and we can stuff the, the messages with a huge amount of, of information. So it's not a technological problem, it's a cognitive semiotic problem. It's about how we, uh, how intelligent beings uh, understand their world and try to find meaning in, in the world. So I suggest instead that we should quite, uh, uh, quite simple, do something together instead. And I propose uh, an interstellar intersubjective interaction that is directed to just them, tied to uh, uh, and tightly connected to the spatial temporal, uh, temporal setting. So tied, uh, it should be tied to space and time, in a particular time and a particular lo location. It shouldn't be a universal or general uh, uh, message to every, everyone. It's, it, it should be directed to a particular uh, spot and particular time. So we should try to establish a joint attention by context-specific signals. We would then develop a mutual referential behavior by pointing to an object or spatial location, astronomical landmarks or periodic events in their neighborhood. For example, with laser technology and checking if the recipient attends to the same objects or location. Uh, I, I'm not the right person to explain the, the, um, if this is doable um, in the technologically, but uh, my main point is that we should try to, to reach uh, some kind of joint attention uh, or attention and intersubjectivity. And that is the case when two or more subjects simultaneously focus their attention on the same target. And the target can be an object, an entity that has a position in space and time, or in a wider sense, events in space and time. So, a simple case could be an asymmetric, uh, synchronous, attentional intersubjectivity, uh, intersubjectivity, that we, the terrestrial intelligence, T in the picture, focus our attention on the target uh, T. The extraterrestrial intelligence E is attracted by our attention focusing. E then follows our irritation to T with the result that both of us focus our attention on small T, the target. But the goal would be to engage in a reciprocal attentional intersubjectivity that E attends not just to our attention to T and vice versa, but to a third order attention in which E attends to our attending to E's attention and vice versa. So the benefit, for example, we, we could take an example that uh, uh, it could be a um, planetary um, transit. Uh, on, we could monitor their, their solar system and we could uh, uh, 
uh, count when a transit will be seen from their planet. So we could uh, point at that event and if we could make them get attention to that, that pointing, they will understand that we are understanding that they are seeing something that we can't see. So that will be some kind of a, a, a mutual understanding or a shared experience. So the benefit of this in interstellar intersubjective interaction is that it will create a shared experience about an object or event. We both will have an ambiguous conception of the very same object, a common reference, that we both have turned our attention to, and we both will know that the other know what that object is. And we are using the pre-linguistic semiotic stages in the phylogenetic and ontogenetic development of communication. We're going to the bottom with the problem to the pre-linguistic semiotic signs, uh, not, not symbols. So it's not an information transfer. Uh, we all know that knowledge change, changes us. And as scientists, maybe we shouldn't change the object or, or the thing we want to study. It would be perhaps better to leave them alone and don't change them We're, with all our internet stuff we, we send to them. Uh, and we this interaction is not a symbolic representation. We don't need any symbols or symbolization or representations. And we don't need any presupposed universal abstract conception. It will solely be the intention to communicate. So my recommendations are that we need research in astrocognition. We have to study the extent and evolution of cognition, sociability, communication, and technology in space. We should know more about these and how they have evolved. And we should also focus on the more fundamental cognitive abilities that underlying interstellar communication and especially intersubjectivity. We sh uh, should uh, search for Earth analogs and intelligence under similar environmental pressures, monitor these candidates and search for electromagnetic leakage and techno markers. And we should not send a quiz, not a universal symbolic information transfer. We should the message should be un understood right this, in one second. It shouldn't be a quiz. We should instead engage in an interstellar, uh, intersubjective interaction. Uh, interact with, we should begin interact with other intersubjective beings. So they should know that we know that they know by sending a message that is the message. So my message today is that the message is the message. And thank you for your attention. Questions? Um, two comments and a question. Uh, recent paper indicates that JWST when it launches in 2018, may, if we're lucky, just have the ability to um, detect some organic chemical smog in the atmosphere of nearby exoplanets. Um, second comment, there's something that's called the SETI ellipsoid, uh, work by Guillermo Le Marchand about using uh, unique temporal, spatial temporal events such as the supernova to uh, coordinate the sending and receiving of messages. And then my question, um, 
Would it make any difference to your conclusions if this distributed cognition of an advanced technology or advanced civilization is machine rather than biological? Um. I, I mean, uh, we, we are already there. We are using machines now. We are using laptops. We are using uh, objects around us to enhance our capabilities. So I don't think it will change so much if, if we are, are finding a, a space probe instead of an organic creature. Um, Yeah, but, but that, that's, yeah. Since I missed almost all your talk, this yeah. will probably be a terrible question. But uh, when you talk about distributed computing, it's sort of the hive mind kind of idea. Kind of idea. This is very popular with, with Hollywood, of course. Yeah, yeah. But if, if you have machines, I think that there are some limits to that. Because if here's one member of the hive and the next member of the hive is far enough away, yeah. then the time required for you to continually update that guy and communicate back and forth with that guy, right? It's like Rosetta, right? It's taking 28 minutes to communicate back and forth. Uh, it becomes longer than the time scale for this guy over here to improve himself, so, you know, a la Moore's yeah. Law or something like that. At that point, all the other guys lose, and it's all centrally located. Yeah, that, that, that's true. That, that, that's why I think that, that there must be a distributed cognition in some way uh, and an egalitarian decision-making. Uh, be because it couldn't be a hierarchical structure that every information must go to an information center or, uh, or it would take too a long time. So it must be independent uh, parts working on, on their own way. Other questions? Let's uh, thank David. And we will now break for lunch. <laughs>